It's weird with the delay. It's having camera issues according to Facebook. Um, okay, I'm going to try and keep this uh, relatively short compared to last week. Okay, so we are going to be talking about the superfoods in plain sight is the title, but it's really just healthy foods that we should be adding to our diet. Um, and healthy, I tried to really structure it as foods that are, it, first this is an, ex an exhaustive list, I'm not an expert by any means, um, but these are foods that I think most if not all people unless they're taking part in a diet that is avoiding one of these things for a specific reason, would agree that these are relatively healthy. So things that are relatively high in fiber and uh, they have antioxidant properties. High in fiber are good because they help regulate blood sugar. It's saturating, which means that it keeps you full so you're not snacking on not good food for you after dinner, before dinner, and whatnot. Um, and it's also good for your fiber is good for your gut and it helps with your bowel movements um, and uh, yeah so then the other thing is antioxidants antioxidants are good for us because they help get rid of free radicals in the body which um, which are no good because they cause oxidation um, and oxidation is bad because um, you can think about it as like rust. Rust is a it's kind of an analogy of, of what oxidation can do to something. And when that's in our, oxidation is, can occur in our body, it can make it easier to break down stuff um, and can lead to things like cancer. And it's just, antioxidants are good because they prevent free radicals. So just you know if something is high in antioxidants, it means it's good for us. Okay, so main foods, um, again, not an exhaustive list and not the maybe most radical list, but um, dark green vegetables, very good. Oh, um, rule of thumb, because I'm going to list off things and people are going to forget it if you're watching, but some of the things. Rule of thumb is antioxidants, think color. So if you see a plate of food and it's very colorful, probably has antioxidants, which means good for us. So, for example, dark green vegetables, colorful, they're vibrant colors, they're good for us because they have antioxidants. They have um, folate, they have zinc, they have calcium, high in iron, magnesium, vitamin C, and they also have fiber, which is, um, so it has two things. Um, and for things that are dark green vegetables, think like broccoli, kale, all lettuces, remain arugula, spinach, um, a nice thing that I learned recently was um, broccoli sprouts are very good for us. Hi Sarah. Broccoli sprouts are very good for us. Um, you could think of broccoli sprouts as the, like, broccoli sprouts are, are stem cells. If a stem cell is in our body, broccoli sprouts are the stem cells of vegetables. Um, and that's how nutrient dense they are. So. Um, look for broccoli sprouts when you're in the grocery store. They can be expensive, but if you are on a budget or you're smart with your money, um, you can buy broccoli seeds and grow them yourself. It's not hard. You just put them in water in like a mason jar and leave them and you change the water every day and you'll have salad full of broccoli sprouts, like a portion like that of broccoli sprouts in about a week. Um, and they're very nutrient dense. Um, next thing, legumes, um, think, okay, sorry, legumes, high in vitamin B, protein, and fiber, which is very good. Um, they're not necessarily, unfortunately, my web connection is not great. I will watch later. Okay, no problem. Um, for legumes, think beans, lentils, peas, alfalfa, um, 
the goons are very good because they're satiating, satiating, and uh, they're high in protein. So they have both of those things, and protein's good for us when we obviously want to um, keep our muscle mass, which is important at all stages in our life, young and old. Um, whole grains, important. Uh, think oatmeal, quinoa, brown rice. Um, and they have fiber again, vitamin Bs, minerals. They help lower our cholesterol. Um, I always tend to try and go for whole grains that are uh, not processed at all. So if you're eating uh, a bread, go for 100% whole wheat bread or anything that's something of that sort, whole wheat flour, but I tend to just go for like things like oats or um, yeah, like just my whole grains is really just oats. I have nothing against bread. The best bread, if you're eating bread, because I do love bread, everyone loves bread. I don't think anyone would say they don't like bread unless they're anti-carb and whatnot, but um, sourdough bread is actually uh, one of the healthier breads, so if you can get a real good sourdough, source of sourdough bread, um, that's good. Uh, there's a bunch of benefits behind that that you can read up on. Um, and then you can, people will say bread's bad because of gluten and everything, but just, it's, it's a debatable thing. Um, okay, so then, um, sweet potato, it's very colorful again, so it has antioxidants. The antioxidant is, uh, carotenoid, which is very good for us. Um, sweet potato is also high in fiber, potassium, vitamin A and C, um, which are all beneficial. Um, it's also quite versatile. Potato, sweet potato can be used in um, many different things, so um, it's good for us. Sourdough bread has been very popular during the pandemic. What does that mean? Does that mean that it's hard to find? Or are you just, what do you mean by that, Danielle? Um, I'll keep it going. Okay, uh, tomatoes, again, colorful. They are high in antioxidants, um, vitamin C, vitamin A. The antioxidant in tomatoes is lycopene, L-Y-C-O-P-E-N-E, -E, and um, it becomes more available to our body. Everyone was making it. Oh, okay, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, sourdough bread's good. Um, you, okay, yeah, sourdough, I was going to say you can try and look for organic sourdough bread and everything, but just sourdough bread in general it tends to be good because it's, um, sourdough bread is just the yeast that is continuously living and it keeps, and they just take from it, um, and a good source of sourdough bread is, is good because it's alive and everything, um, and then you can get it all scientific and go look and there's, there's, there's TV shows that just have like episodes on sourdough bread in Italy and everything, which is kind of interesting, but uh, yeah, sourdough bread's good. Um, okay, uh, tomatoes, the ly lycopene in tomatoes is, uh, becomes best available to our body when it's cooked in healthy fats like olive oil, which is kind of a staple of the Itali an Italian diet. Um, so yeah, so tomatoes are good. Uh, eggs. Um, Although some people might be might say eggs can be bad because of high cholesterol, eggs are one of the most, if not most, um, complete nutrient uh, profiles of anything we can eat, and they're very accessible. Obviously, um, they have vitamins. They have uh, a lot of vitamins like vitamin A, choline, C O C H O L I N E, ch choline or choline. Um, they have they're high in iron, high in phosphorus, obviously high in protein, and they have good fats. Um, they have antioxidants like uh, lutein and um, but the one thing I wanted to note about eggs is that the quality of the egg that you, you buy and eat plays a big part into how healthy they are they can be for you so one thing that I learned recently is kind of like the scaling of how good an egg is so when you think of when you go to the grocery store and you look at all the egg packages, you can be overwhelmed with what they all say and what they all mean because they're their businesses and they're marketing to you. But if you're if you're looking to buy the best egg, the best egg are pasture raised eggs. And if you can get an organic pasture raised egg, that's the best egg. 
but then from there it goes pasture-raised, organic, free-range, cage-free, uh, vegetarian-fed, and then conventional. Conventional is like the worst egg. Um, like conventional think like like chickens living on top of each other, and then they're also making eggs, which is no good. But a pasture-raised egg is a chicken that is able to, to run free, supposedly. Well, yes, because like, they're, they're regulating everything, but they run free. Um, they, because they're running free, they tend to be happier, which means their hormones are better and everything that's going into making that egg is healthier. Um, if you don't believe me, or if you think that some of the, some of the, it's just marketing, you can look online, or you can even do this experiment yourself, break a pasture-raised organic egg into a bowl and break a conventional egg into a bowl. One, the shells are probably different. The pasture-raised egg shell should be thicker and like stronger, and the conventional egg shell should break and be frittle. And then if you look at the yolk, you want to see almost an orange yolk, not necessarily a yellow yolk. The orange and vibrant color of the orange shows how healthy it is for you and it has, it's a symbol of the antioxidants. And then the yellow kind of not so vibrant yellow color means that it's not as healthy and there's less nutrients in it. So um, that's just something I thought was interesting that I learned a couple years ago. Uh, next thing, yogurt. Yogurt is very healthy for us. Has high calcium, obviously high protein. It has uh, probiotic profiles. Um, I tend to stray towards Greek yogurt just because it's higher in protein. The big benefit of yogurt is the probiotic and obviously the calcium and the protein, but um, the probiotic profile for yogurt, um, look for live active cultures that are in your yogurt. So like, I'm gonna read stuff out, but lactobacillus, um, acidophilus, if you can't pronounce it and it looks kind of, it ends with a U-S or a L-U-S um, or C-U-S, it means it's an active culture and those are good for us. Um, it's good for our gut health. Yeah, the egg yolks white, yeah, so for, so Danielle said I always wondered why the egg yolk colors differed. Um, I noticed this because when I was in London a couple years ago, I, I went to a, a very posh, as they say in London, place, and I got an egg, and the yolk was orange, and um, and then that stemmed my thought of why are not all my eggs this color, and then I learned about um, in London they or in England they have different protocols and different uh, uh, regulations on eggs because they they, I don't know if someone was really passionate about it in the government. <laughs> so uh, they have high quality eggs in, in London and um, a lot of places in Europe. So, yeah. Um, uh, okay, Greek yogurt, good. I like tend to go Greek yogurt. You can do any yogurt. Kefir is very good also. It has probiotic profiles. The one thing that I want to say, and I think most people, if they think about it, would agree with is don't get flavored yogurt. It's just sugar. Add your own fruit because the sugar ruins the active probiotic cultures and it, it, it defeats the purpose of eating yogurt. So don't buy flavored yogurt. Vanilla yogurt, all that, don't buy that. If you like your flavor in your yogurt, which most people would probably do, then put your own fruit in your yogurt. And that leads to my next superfood. Um, which are berries. Again, think color, very colorful. They're high in fiber, they're naturally sweet, so it's not just artificial uh, sugars that are um, in your food, um, and they're tasty. Everyone can agree that berries are tasty. Uh, they're also, um, they're also, uh, they're good for you, what was I gonna say? They. Um, I forget what I was going to say. I think I was going to say they're naturally sweet, they're high in fiber, and uh, they're versatile. You can put them in a smoothie, you can put them in uh, a bowl of cereal, you can put them in a bowl of oatmeal, um, anything. I'm I forgot what I was still going to say. I'll probably come back to it if it comes to me. But, 
Uh, okay, so uh, mushrooms. Mushrooms are also very good. They're high in vitamin A, potassium, fiber, and they have a lot of antioxidants. So um, uh, mushrooms are good if you want to kind of change up the flavors of your food. Um, they're also there are a lot of mushrooms recently have been starting to be used. I have a smoothie every morning with plain yogurt and berries and other good stuff. That's good. It's very good. Yeah, keep doing that. That's good. Um, so, uh, yeah, mushrooms are good. They can kind of be, they're also relatively high in protein compared to other um, things. Um, yeah, mushrooms, I don't know. If you like mushrooms, eat them a lot. Some people don't like mushrooms. I have a friend that hates them, and every time I say, let's get mushroom on our pizza, he cringes, so, um, I don't know. Just, mushrooms are good, though. Uh, fish. Fish, depending on the fish, um, are very healthy. They're a good source of protein. If you go for uh, white fish, they're leaner protein. Um, but then the not white fish, like a, let's say, say, a, say a salmon, has very healthy omega-3 fatty acids, which are good for us. Um, when you're looking to buy fish, buy, you want to look for wild fish because um, farm-raised fish just means that they're sitting in the water and, far, and wild fish is they're swimming and there's actually fishermen catching them. So wild fish are better, they're better for us, they're happier, they're happier fish. Um, I tend to, someone told me this a couple years ago and I thought that made sense, but I tend to buy frozen fish um, because although it looks very nice when you're at the, the grocery store and they have this big piece of salmon out ready and orange and everything to be cooked, when they catch the fish, if it's farm raised or not, when they, when they harvest, we'll say the fish, they always freeze it. So when you buy your fish in the grocery store, it's already been frozen, and then you're buying it when it's thawed again. But if you buy frozen fish, it means that it was caught, frozen, and then you're buying that frozen fish. So either way, it's always, fish you're eating has always been frozen, unless, okay, unless you're, you're catching it yourself. But in the grand scheme of things in grocery stores, it's frozen, and then you're buying it thawed. So 10, Go to the frozen section and look for different fish that are already frozen and then buy from there and and see if you like it better. I'm not going to say never buy uh, thawed fish because it's also easier to go to the grocery store and get up a thawed fish and then cook it right away, but um, yeah. Um, mercury content in fish can be a debatable topic. Stray towards, if you want, okay, one, you can Google just like lists of fish that um, have higher or lower mercury. General rule of thumb, if it's a smaller fish, it has lower mercury because as fish eat other fish, um, they get their mercury. So like a big fish like a shark would have high mercury and a small fish like a sardine has low mercury. Um, shrimp, for example, has low mercury. Shrimp's very good. Um, I forget what celebrity, but some celebrity years ago went on a shrimp diet and she got really skinny, but... Um, Shrimp's very good for us. Um, I love lobster. Lobster's good. Lobster obviously can be kind of expensive, but if you, like Costco I know has good lobster. Um, lobster's high in protein, has good fats. Um, I'm not sure the cholesterol content of lobster, but again, I'm a fan of if it's a, if it's a thing that, that lives or is green and stuff, then it's it's good for us. So um, yeah, lobster's good, it tastes great, easy to make if you can kind of figure it out. If you just kind of split it down the middle, take out the tail and put it in the oven, or you, uh, I know, I have a friend that made just shrimp, eat more shrimp, oh, yeah. So shrimp's good. It's also very easy. If you buy a frozen um, shrimp or just like any shrimp, and you put it in like, tomato sauce and have a shrimp pasta or you put it on the side with uh, anything. If you're having friends over, you just put shrimp out as like an appetizer. Shrimp's quite versatile and it's very good for us and it's low mercury. So, um, what else was I gonna say about fish? Um, yeah, just try and, try and limit the bigger fishes. Um, 
just because they're higher in mercury. And you can look them up and kind of see, and then there's different recommendations from different uh, different sources that recommend quantities of fish that should or shouldn't be uh, eaten, but fish is good. Um, extra virgin olive oil, great fat. Uh, it has um, vitamin E, polyphenols, monounsaturated fatty acids, which are all very good. Um, try and use olive oil instead of stuff like butter and margarine. Um, it's a more nutrient dense form of fat that's that's easy to I don't want to say cook with because olive oil is best when it's not cooked but it's it's good to cook with also um, there's debates about olive oil having a different boiling temperature and everything but or not um, boiling not boiling burning maybe um, so olive oil drizzle on your vegetables I said this in the last live, but when you're using olive oil, don't just dump it from the thing because you're going to probably put too much and, and, and olive oil can be quite calorie dense. So just pour it into a spoon and then drizzle. Makes, you'll, eat, you'll have less olive oil, but you're still going to get the same taste. Um, although olive oil is very good and limiting your olive oil shouldn't really be such a big uh, worry. Maybe limiting like butter or margarine should be a big worry for most people. Um, and then I wanted to finish off with spices. So um, garlic is, can be, it's kind of a spice, you can also just cook with it, but garlic is a good source of uh, manganese, vitamin C, B6, vitamin B6, selenium and fiber. Uh, it's good at really reducing cholesterol and it actually boosts um, your immune system, which I learned recently because I got sick so yeah, I want to say a year ago, and uh, and one of my friends said that her um, her dad lives by eating garlic when he's sick, and it makes him feel better. Um, and then I looked it up, and there are uh, immune benefits of garlic. Funny enough, I thought <laughs> I thought she meant because she wasn't sure, but I thought she meant that her dad eats raw garlic. So I was just stuffing hot raw garlic. <laughs> um, and that's no fun. So I would, you're fine to cook it and it has relatively the same benefits. So just cook garlic into food and it's immune boosting. Um, and uh, okay, then moving on. Um, ginger root, very good. Uh, it has antioxidant, which is called gingerol. Um, you can use it to make natural tea. So you can just kind of boil some water, get a ginger root, kind of like shave it off and then you have a nice ginger tea. Um, it has immune boosting factors. Ginger's good. Yeah, see there you go. My grandfather used to make garlic toast when he was sick. Yeah, see I didn't know that. My my, my parents never used to do that. Um, but yeah, it's a thing. So uh, garlic's good for us. Last spice I want to talk about is turmeric. Turmeric is again very colorful if you think of turmeric. Um, it has, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Curcumin, C-U-R-C-U-M-I-N, which is a potent antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. Um, turmeric's good. People, some people don't like turmeric, but if you like turmeric, feel free to spice up your meats or uh, fish or anything, chicken, fish or anything like that with it, and, and it's good for us. Um, that's all the. Uh, that's all the. That's the list that I kind of made quickly. Um, if if you, th this was not an exhaustive list, you can easily Google different superfoods um, and a lot of things will come up, like goji berries, that I know I didn't talk about them, but they're very good for us. Um, the main thing I wanted to take away for superfoods to be is that things that you can see in the grocery store that we tend maybe not to get or we didn't think to get or anything like that that are high in fiber, high in antioxidant, um, and they're natural. Obviously, most good foods for us are gonna be um, natural, but then I also wanted to give like the little uh, fun facts about like eggs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the rundown of superfoods in plain sight. Um, and, and rule of thumb, again, is powerful and satiating, um, which means um, 
it's filling, so like high fiber foods. Um, oh, okay, this is, okay, this is not really so relevant. The thing I remembered that I was gonna say about berries is that uh, they're relatively low in calories. So you can, if you get a big bowl of strawberries compared to something else, it's not that bad in calories if you're trying to manage your, your weight. Um, and uh, another fun fact about olive oil that I didn't have written down but then I thought about right now is that you can tell if it's a good olive oil if you if you taste it just by itself and you and you have a burning sensation in the back of your throat that means it's a good olive oil a good extra virgin olive oil if you don't get that sensation buy a different olive oil um, and uh, that's something that I learned a couple years ago uh, that is true so if you spend more money on olive oil you'll definitely get that feeling if you kind of are a little more frugal with your olive oil you probably won't get that strong won't get that feeling or very a very faint burning in your throat if you just have it alone um yeah that's all i got um i hope that was informative and uh, thank you for participating danielle um it's very appreciated and uh and I guess I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. All right. Thank you. Bye.